Well, you know, I, I got to push, I got to give you a little shit with challenging Nate Diaz and Haney. Right? <laughs> oh, I love you this. I, get, Hold on, I was going to save it for the companion, but this is no, good. No, no, no. You got to do this. <laughs> no, we got it. We don't, we don't, we can start with whatever you want, but you know, when I see that, and I, I defend you, I was defending you because we're boys. <laughs> I defend you as much as I can in my world, okay? <laughs> Let's just start with that. <laughs> so, what do you think about that? You, <laughs> are, we, okay. are we rolling? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you think about it? Um, <laughs> it's tough because you and I are bo boys. Like I we're know, friends. You're my guy. Yeah. I'll say this, and I, I try to do it in a positive spin, like because obviously the MMA audience, the box audience, oh, they, they don't know it. you. They hate it. They hate it. And like, oh, he's an idiot. He's a meathead. I'm like, hold on. That same ambition, the belief in yourself, is what's made you successful. So of course you're like, yeah, I can beat up those guys. That's why you're Bradley Martin. Like, right. That's why you ran with that. Being full transparent, those guys would. Up. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, listen. Because let me just help you out here. So, you know, I was. Uh, I'm, how how much you weigh? About two sixty right now. Two sixty. You're a big dude, shredded yeah. too. All all you know, bodied up. Yeah. I, in my prime, I was six four, two forty. Probably ten percent body fat. Golden gloves champion boxer, like you know, top ten UFC skilled dude, skilled dude. And I sparred a guy who was a hundred and thirty eight pound world champion boxer. I couldn't touch him, dude. An, an, an MMA? Boxing, straight boxing. boxing. Destroyed, couldn't touch him. Fuck me up. Now, when it comes to like the MMA side of things, and I think you say you can beat these guys in a street fight. The whole thing is a street fight. Well, hold on now, let me, <laughs> let me clarify. And I don't too. know if you're serious or not. Okay, this you is always fuck around. This <laughs> and it goes viral, so good for you. But I have to defend your ass, man, because we're buddies. I'm it's exhausting. Lie. I'm not going to lie. It's a little trolly. The name yeah. one's a little trolly. Devin Haney in a street fight, I'll beat the out of him though i really do believe that 150 pounds i do believe this one now that that one it, there's more of an argument because now if you like bear hug him like obviously you're not gonna stand back in, no, in any never. distance now if you bear hug him like slam him to the ground he has no jiu-jitsu no wrestling that one i can yeah i can fuck with that like obviously like the, you're talking about like ground against a car like fucking <laughs> yeah like crush him. yeah like he 150 pounds like a towel to me but now demetrius johnson who fights at 125 in a street fight would you up, Why dude? Demetrius Johnson? He's tiny, but he's black belt and everything when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat. But you don't. So on the ground, I know you like. You'll think you like pick him up and slam him into the concrete, or I don't know what, where you're thinking this going to go. I'm going like, to crush his head on the floor. No, no, mm -mm. really, no. One twenty-five pounds. I, Demetrius Johnson, or like a. Mike, I don't know. I don't know who it is. Okay, like uh, Mike uh, Mushameshi. He's the number one, like one of the number one jiu-jitsu guys. He trains um, in uh, Mark Zuckerberg. He's his trainer, but he's like the outlier. He looks like a nerd, but savage. So you're so big, I assume you think he's like Rampage Jackson. If you've ever seen that against Paulo Filo, Rampage, or Paulo gets him in like an arm bar or a triangle, and he just picks him up, slams on the ground like Hulk, and knocks him out. So I assume you're thinking that. They kill them, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. With the guys like that, they're going to get to your ankles so fast, you're not going to have time to pick them up. And then they also, all they do is deal with big guys, so they know how to Put you in a position we don't have leverage to but pick him up. 125 pounds though, that's so. Me just, I know. I can dude. lift that up with one hand. I know. I'm, I'm telling you, he's gonna get back. He's gonna get your neck. He's gonna get your ankles. Your but wrist. I've rolled. I've rolled with like a uh, like a really high level black belt um, in, in here in Tarzana, Edwin, and he's like I think he's like one of the number one guys in jiu jitsu. But, but there's levels too. So, and, but he's a heavyweight, right? He's like 180. 180. Yeah. There's just, but like, I'm, I, I'm talking about like the outliers. Like, they're gonna, like, Chrome Gracie's 145 pounds. I, uh, you know, I was black belt jiu jitsu. Like, I can't beat him. You think in, in jiu jitsu? Fight, in, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about jiu jitsu. I'm talking about like, I'm able to like hit this motherfucker with elbows and shit and crush him on the floor. Because I, I know they're in just not gonna be there for you to hit. Yeah, you That's think what so? I'm saying. Not, not, not the elite guys. Now, Devin Haney, I agree. If, if you get close and you like fucking, like, the, the, the mountain in Game of Thrones and grab him and, and take your thumbs like break his eyes or something. <laughs> yeah, like Devin Haney doesn't know what he's doing as far as like on the ground and wrestling. You're so much stronger. Yeah, but a, like a, a so upper what do you say? MMA guy's gonna fuck you up. What do you what do you <laughs> say to defend me? That's what's I'm curious. I just say like because people hate it. I hate it. They hate, hate it. Especially it, hardcore fans. I, I love it I though. I, I know love you how do. much they hate it. I defend you. Just I, I say this. It's like ignorance is bliss <laughs> like you know it is what it is but then also that those aspirations and the self-belief in yourself is what made you who you are so yeah of course you're gonna believe that 
Yeah, I have to. You have to. What am I going to be like? Nah, this guy will beat me. No, up. you're like you're a grown man. You're Jack, so it's like oh, I can beat that guy. And it's like all right, you know. I, I obviously I know it's a little different. I just think 150, like someone 125 though. That 125 guy, Mighty Mouse would. Like, you're talking about like the best of all time. Okay. You you wouldn't be able to touch him. Yeah. But like certain guys, yeah, you'd probably if you get a hold of him, you'd mount him and crush your face. You're also athletic too, so there's that, and you're strong. Because I think people. Most people, when they see that and it goes viral and they don't know who I am, they're like, oh, it's a dumbass big body. Yeah, they think you're a meathead. They think like I, like that, that I'm not athletic, that I can't jump super high, that I'm not like. No, you're an athlete. I've you're done like. It's, it's not like I, I think I'm going to sit there and be like. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. No, but it's also the internet, you know? So they don't know your story. They're just seeing that like this yeah. guy's an idiot. But it's also, you know. Like what if you just torpedo tackle someone and just like, dude, because you just lay on top of a 125 pound guy? Can't, mm, what, really? Not, not, not the elite guys. Dude, I want to find that mother. I want to find this guy you're talking about. DJ? I want to find him. Yeah, I'll text him right now. Text him. You. I want to yeah. try. I'm not going to fight him, fight him in a street fight. I want to just lay on top of him in f***ing jiu -jitsu and So like I, I did this campaign with the mountain, Thor. He's okay. strong. Thor's strongest strong than you, right? Thor's strong, right? Way stronger. So world's strongest man at the time, you know, or he's been like multiple world's strongest man. I did this campaign. He's also 6'8". He's 6'8", 400 pounds, but yeah. shredded too, jacked. He rolled with uh, Gordon Ryan. You know what Gordon Ryan is? He's about 220 pounds. Yeah, no, well, that guy's heavier. He's 220 pounds. Yeah. 220 pounds. He's the best jiu-jitsu practitioner maybe of all time. Yeah. But Thor rolled with him. I'm a fan that. of that guy, by yeah, the way. Yeah, he's the best. Yeah. Gordon, Ryan, Gordon, Gordon Ryan's salt of the earth. He's yeah. one of the best people I know. But he rolled with the mountain. And the mountain's a big, strong guy, deadlifts a 1,000 pounds. And he rolled with Gordon Ryan, and he went into it being like, I know, like, just do this thing, but I'm so much bigger. I'm just going to lay on top of him. He couldn't. He got done was like, oh, dude. Like, I couldn't. Do, like, I would go to lay on top of him, and he'd hold me like a baby and spin me around, flip me over. 400 pounds. Yeah, flip me over, mess well, around Well, I believe that me. about this guy. He's 220, though. 220, but still 400 pounds in the world's strongest man. Not, and I'm talking, it would like, be like you playing with a baby. Like you, that guy's so skilled, and the the more pressure you put yeah. on, that's what he wants. For the record, I'm not saying that guy. By yeah, the way, yeah. <laughs> just yeah, want to yeah. make that clear. I'm just saying like that, like 400 pounds, 220, like that weight discrepancy there. Even yeah, I guess I see what you're saying. Damn, but it's funny. I like when you do it because then I like people are like you. What's up with this guy? I'm like, oh yeah, he's fucking God trolling, damn. and he's getting views. Like that's what he's doing. But <laughs> Nate was cool about it too. Nate was really cool about yeah, it. Yeah, like and and typically he he. he I don't know how well you know Nate, but like Nate can be a little feisty. I thought, listen, look, the, is there a mic back there? Yeah. Pick that mic up. I told the boys, I'm not gonna lie, I told the boys, I said. He said, he said that he was intentionally, Brad was trying to intentionally get Nate to fight him on camera because he knows that he's feisty. I thought Nate would be like, I'll do it right now. He, he's a chill dude though, but I think <laughs> if you would disrespect him, you're like, man, you suck. Your last fight, like if you were super disrespectful, well, I would that's never. when you're gonna poke the bear. I would never. But you're not that, you're not that no. much of a troll. No, no, no. Where you're like, I'm a fan guy. of that yeah, guy. Yeah, you're a cool dude. Yeah. So I think he was like, oh man, get out of here. No, he was he's like, nice I'll as fuck you up, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah. You won't, you won't, of yeah. course. And, and Nate's like, a, you know, he street fights. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, okay. And he's not, he's not a small dude by any means. No, no. Yeah. So the real question is, who wins the street fight, me or you? <laughs> That's the real question. Is it though? That I, is. I trained all my life. I dude. know, but like you're getting older guys. now, dude. How old are you? <laughs> Thirty-four. I mean, I'm forty. You know, but it's I feel like, like your knees hurt. Uh, no, I I, I don't have any <laughs> injuries, but I would like to think I could beat you up. The problem is, it's like, I mean, you're a big dude, so it's like some could happen for street sure. Street fight. Street, but. Uh, you keep saying street fight, but do you think you're gonna like hit you with curb a stomp me or some like this like WWE <laughs> shit, you know? <laughs> it's like a well a true street fight, like you might not know what's coming. That's true, and you like cold cock me, I'm yeah. screwed. I see, you're a big I see guy you get out of the car, just bang. Yeah. But I would like to think like you know I have my ten thousand hours sparring big yeah. world class guys. Yeah, I mean you I fought big dudes. Yeah, yeah, heavyweight, like yeah, top ten in the world. Yeah, you know, it's so it's like <laughs> it's a little different. But again, I I don't take any offense to it. I mean. Yeah. It's not like I'd whoop your ass. Like you're a tough fucking dude too. On top of that, like you have and you have some darkness too. You know, people know your history with your dad and shit. yeah, it's I'm like a little crazy. You have some anger, dude. But then people are gonna take that comment right now and be like, you know, the funniest thing that people say in reaction to me saying that is the I see red comment. Like, trust me, bro. Trust me, bro. <laughs> trust me, bro. I see red. I swear, dude. Like, it, 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 yo, I'm not gonna lie. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's I, fun. I see it. I laugh. Like they brought up on my show today. I'm like, oh god, that's just Bradley's fucking around, man. Like he's not. And obviously the vibes. Fun too because nate wouldn't entertain that if you're like disrespectful and like no i can actually beat you like get the fuck out of here yeah of course so I, mean, it's, it, I think it's funny 
it's it's interesting. Like and your how, fans now. Yeah, they I like, think my yeah. true fans now. But it's interesting to watch people get really riled up about it. And yeah. then so so it's funny because there was a clip. Um, there was a clip where we were talking about Schultz like as we were walking in here. There was a clip where <clears throat> Schultz was like roasting um, Nelk for the pod, I guess, because like Steiny, like he went really hard on Steiny, and like they didn't release the pod. Then they finally released the pod. So there's this whole like clip where like he's like, "Are you guys even friends and all this shit?" And I, I replied to it because Schultz was like, he basically was like, "This felt awkward." He's like, "Oh, Brad's normally on this podcast. Is like, you see the person who, like normally drives it and stuff." And then I jumped in and was like, "But to be honest, like who wins in a street fight, me or Andrew Schultz?" <laughs> Like, that's what I want to know. You, keep doing. you yeah, should make merch that says, who wins in a street fight? <laughs> that would crush, dude. Yeah, it would. I'd beat you in a street fight. <laughs> I, that's like, I'd yo, beat you in a street fight. It's so funny because, like, it, the chance of it happening. Dude, I'm not going to lie, though, too. I get so much hate. Obviously, like, you know, from people in that sport. Like, I'll find random pages of, like, people who practice, like, MMA or jiu-jitsu or something. It. And they post something. They get, like, no views. And they post a video being like, f*** Bradley Martin. I'll fuck him. It's like a million views. I like it though, but that that and that that just that for the day or whatever how long it lasts like that's the thing like you're the focus that's their way of you know yeah and the community rallies around it. like nobody in the space like yeah can no Bradley can do it you know because yeah. you're not from the I love how people yeah I get it and I understand it I just love how there's there no matter what even the people who like really believe it there's still this like weird divide of like because the idea of a street fight is so. It's, I'm not talking about getting in a ring and like getting in an octagon and trying to fight you in like what you're yeah. so used to. Yeah. So there's still that like that air of like anything could happen in this. Oh, don't fight. get me wrong. Like you're a big, powerful dude. So it's like some of it's like, yeah, like you with the Haiti thing when they brought it up. I was like, I mean, Bradley's fucking big explosive. We're we talking like you're in like Times Square and there's like cars around. Like, what are we talking about here? Yeah. Like there's like, cones involved. In like, shit, a, like, like Street Fighter. Yeah. Map, is it? yeah like, yeah. Is he pushing him against a car? And he's like kicking him like. Can I use like things yeah, on the street? Yeah, there's some variables I need to know. It's pretty funny, dude. It's funny though. God. But Haney, yeah, if you get close, you wrap them up. You know, you're fucking... No, I've crushed that kid. <laughs> he was a cool dude though, right? Cool. So talented. Yeah. Really Stupid fucking, talented. Really fucking cool. And also, and like, yeah, there's, so in boxing right now, who, who are the top guys? There's they like, fight this Saturday. Well, I don't know when this airs. When's this air? This air tomorrow. Saturday is the best fight in boxing in I don't know how many years. But uh, more technical, better fighters in the prime than Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. You have Earl Spence and Bud Crawford. So that's they're the both undefeated. One's thirty nine and zero. I think the other's twenty nine. Thirty nine and zero. Who the f both, Earl uh, uh, Bud Crawford? Thirty nine and zero. Thirty nine. Bud Crawford's number one in the world pound for pound. Terence Cro uh, and um, Earl Spence number two pound for pound in the world. Both zero losses. Zero. zero losses. It's like a legacy fight. It's we, boxing fans have been asking for this fight for years, and then finally it's coming. They're both still they're in their prime, kind of towards the end of their prime, but it's like happening. It's a big, big deal in boxing. Is it so a fight like this? <clears throat> do you think it's worth financially more than like a fight like Garcia Haney, or like Garcia no. like Javante? No. Like it won't do the numbers, which is a shame. That's the world we live in. Like it won't do the numbers of Ryan Garcia and Tank Davis that Davis, was on yeah. Showtime before, but it'll do it like I don't know, maybe six hundred, seven hundred thousand pay per view buys. But if you know how the the knock on boxing is always like, ah, we don't get the fights we want to see. This now is. you're getting it, bitches. So pay for it. But <clears> this is like again, Earl uh, Spence isn't. He's not great. Like he's not gonna be on TikTok dancing and shit. Like he's not great on the mic. Bud Crawford, all he cares about is boxing. Like I've had on my show uh, years ago. Um, you know, they're not getting any great sound bites. They're not characters. All they give a f about is this boxing. This is pure boxing. That's it. So <clears throat> take the marketing and the, all the, the yeah. hype and the YouTube ears and all that shit out of it. As far as boxing goes, it's the best fight in years. Man, I hope people are. I hope people buy it then. I hope people support it for sure. Because I know people, there's that, that, it's such an interesting time where like, you know, Ryan has so much <clears throat> like internet clout where like his fight will be, and he was a great fighter, amazing Love fighter. Ryan. He'll have such like so much more buys because of that. And it's such an interesting thing. Cause like coming up in the sport, I know Ryan was like attacked for being this like popular guy on like the internet. Pretty boy. He's like the Bieber of boxing, but the kid can fucking fight. Yeah. But it's just interesting how it's just the whole dynamic has changed. How we're literally having this conversation about two, probably the best fighters ever in the history fighting and we're both gonna know that they're probably gonna make less money doing that fight Isn't that crazy <clears throat> and, 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 and like we're talking about like i asked this i asked my guys this when i get to studio today i said what sells more pay-per-views shows the time we're in what sells more pay-per-views 
Jake Paul, Nate Diaz, or Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence? Now, as far as talent goes, it's not even close, Bubba. I mean, you're talking about two of the, of the greatest to ever put boxing gloves on yeah. in their prime fighting. It's insane fight. Well, you, for the pound for pound number one. Jake Paul, right? Seven fights. C six and one. Nate Diaz, a little older. But I would assume that probably does more pay per view. It's the oddity of it though. I think it's also like it reminds me of like the first UFC days when like they would just put people like random people against each other. What got people so interested in it was like just like the guy who's good at wrestling versus like this really heavy guy. Like you remember when UFC first yeah. was oh, that yeah. what it was? It, it was just like yeah. odd ass fights. Yeah, there's no weight classes, there's like a karate guy versus sumo. Like yeah. One guy was 160 pounds, the other guy's three hundred. There's that, and then I just think it's also eyeballs. Like Jake Paul's more famous than Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford put together. Yeah. So like he blasts them out. It's just he has whatever thirty million followers. More people are gonna see it. Yeah. So for me, just fucking changed the game, man. Completely. You said something about <clears throat> Tyson Fury and Ngannou fighting. They fight what's, in October. What's the bigger fight that like the UFC could have is none except for like Mark Zuckerberg and fucking Elon, Elon Musk fight. Yeah, do you, do you think that would ever happen? I don't think it happens. No, that would honestly be the coolest thing ever. Like, think of that. Like, think of that. I mean, I feel like all the money they would have to just give to us because they have so much. They have too much money. There's no way they're keeping that. But money. I do think it's funny how the UFC and Elon and Mark are like, yeah, it's not about money. You know, we're going to donate the money. The amount of money the UFC would make off being part of that is insane they'd make money hand over fist so i know they're giving up the purses to charity and it's not you know they don't need more money i don't think the fight ever ever happens ever not, happens. Even, not even the money dude just like the everyone in the world would would probably tune in my mom show. would tune in she don't give a shit about fighting yeah my like, mom would tune in but then also it's interesting like guys like Dominic cruz i've talked to and he's mr ufc and he, he's a commentator and he loves it because he might bring new eyeballs to the sport I actually think it's gonna be a bad product. Like neither guy's ever been in a street fight. Yeah. The cardio and the, like they've never been in like they're not even athletes. Like not even high school, so they don't even perform in front of five hundred people. And then you can put them into a UFC main event. Bro, that's like so they're gonna gas out in three minutes. And then you got you know Elon, you know his tits and the milky skin. You got Mark Zuckerberg, this little nerd. So it's gonna be a really bad. Pro I'm telling you guys, think you want to see it? It's gonna be a shit show, dude. I want to see it though. So yeah, bad. I mean, I I'll, I'll watch it. it. So I'll, I'll pay for it. Yeah. God, I want to see it so bad. I, th but that's, it's like a billionaire problem. Like, like these billionaires that they're so rich and wealthy and bored, like Elon and Mark Zuckerberg is like, okay, let's fight each other. It's like, how, how bored are you? Or it's like the people that went and saw the Titanic in that makeshift submarine. Oh, bro, that was. Hey, bitch, <clears throat> you're that bored? Like, go somewhere. You're going go to a submarine to see the Titanic? Well, you see it in Vegas at the wind. They have like a little thing. Yeah. That's, what are you doing? But that's what's that. So I, I want to ask you about that. Do you think that was like real? Like, do you think they just really were like, I want to go do this? I think they're so bored. It's some billionaire shit. Like I like, could use the money. How much? I think it was how much ever. I think it was like 250,000. 250,000 to do it. Yep. If they're like, hey, we'll give you a, 200, ticket, a ticket. A ticket. Yeah. If they were like, I'll give you 250,000 to go in this makeshift submarine and go see the Titanic. But like, absolutely not. And I'm nowhere near their level. I'd be like, oh, you out of your fucking life. It just sounds fucked. Like, it sounds idea. like you're going to die. No, I want to live, dude. Yeah. It's stupid. I, I, how rich are you? And then all these billionaires like climbing Everest and shit. No, no, dude. Yeah. Like, get a hobby, bro. And like, so many people die doing that every year? So many. They're like, like hang gliding and shit and jumping out of planes. Start a podcast, bitch. <laughs> yeah. What no, are you actually, doing? Actually, dude, she, dog. she loves this right now. Oh, I love dogs, man. Man. So, so, okay, Ngannou and, and Fury, that's going to actually happen? That's happening for all the money. Like, Ngannou won that kind of controversy like when he left the UFC. The what UFC, did he, he joined the IPF or PFL? Uh, PFL. PFL. But that's, that's, that's all like... He's uh, a chairman and shit. Yeah, but that, I don't care about that. The, the, him leaving the UFC and they offered him the biggest contract in heavyweight history, none of that matters. And when he left, I said, the only thing, the only way Francis wins, not this big PFL deal where they're promise him all this money and these seven figures. It, it's only a win if he gets the Fury fight. That's the only way it was smart to leave the UFC. Yeah. PFL doesn't have the mark mm. in the UFC. They don't have Dana White. They just don't have the capabilities. But if he leaves and gets the Fury fight, it was a smart decision. Now, it took some time, and people were making fun of him, but he got it. Yeah. But he might make, I'd say on the low end, $30 million for that fight, $40 million. Which is huge. What, so what? Fuck you money. Done. Yeah. Never has to fight in the PFL. Doesn't have to do anything. $40 mm. mil? What are we doing? Yeah, cause like, what, what's the what's the top purse that's ever the UFC's ever seen? 
Like, it must Probably have been a McGregor. Connor. Yeah, Connor fight. How Probably much got is that? Like 20 mil. Yeah. But 40 mil? Okay. Yeah. And like, he, you know, he fights John, he won't make any weird. Nowhere near that. They yeah. couldn't pay him that. He'd retire before he made that much money in the UFC. Because after John, there's really no big fights for him. And I don't think he beats John, to be honest. I think that'd be a tough fight for him. Yeah. So he I, loses that one, and then what? Dude, that John Jones is so good at fucking fighting. The but best. he took how long off, and then he comes back and just fucks this dude up and like. The best. The best we've ever seen. I think John retires in, uh, in, in uh, I think, November. Mass Square Garden, I think he retires. <clears throat> I think he beats Steve and then retires. Yeah, he's I mean, from New York. It's a good send-off. There's not a lot of stars left for him. He's done it all. Yeah. It's just like, are you just going to beat other people that are just so easy for you to beat? I don't know if they're easy <clears> to beat, but there's, there's just not names that are going to be big pay-per-views. Yeah. Like, there's a Russian guy who's a fucking savage. Who is that? Pavlovich. Like, okay, you were talking about that. Nightmare. He's this Russian dude who's murking everybody. But, but it's, it's just like you're going to lose if, to if someone. We, if we were Postmates and came and delivered it, no, you guys wouldn't know who he is. Most people don't. Yeah. So John's like, well, that, it's a big risk. doesn't do anything for me. There's a guy named Tom Aspinall who's a savage out of England who, you, who could pose some threats. But those are really only two guys. Fighting's always kind of been that, like, I know boxing has always been, like, not set up fights, but, like, fights that just have to make sense. Like, even especially for the people who have the more popular, more, more like, At a certain clout. level, for sure. But it's, has, it, has it always been that way, kind of like the UFC, or has, it, has that become more that way now because of the internet? Yeah, that's a good point. Well, I think that's why Jake Paul has a career because he's, he's fighting like he's doing what, like that's going to get the most eyeballs. Not the yeah. fights that he can win or that, you know, that are really tough for him. It's like, no, no, fight the people and smart. Like, I don't hate on Jake. Like, yeah, fight the people that you make the most money and have the most chance of winning. Fuck everything else. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we want to see him fight a real boxer. If I'm Jake, I'm like, why? I'll just yeah. fight these MMA dudes who are older that everyone knows and it's going to sell pay-per-views. Yeah. Like, he's, he's doing it right. Yeah, Nate is, like, one of the easily one of the best fights he could ever fucking have. I mean, Nate has one of the biggest audiences. I never even realized that. Massive. Like, People I realized it when I went to, I don't know what fight it was. I think it was his brother's fight in Anaheim. And, like, the whole entire fucking, the whole arena is, like, They're MMA royalty. Diaz. They're MMA royalty. Just because they, 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 they've always been against the man. They just speak their minds. Like, people love them, dude. They yeah. just love them. I learned the hard way, like, and I didn't even mean to. Like, me and Nate got into it one time when I was working for a Showtime after the Floyd mayweather Connor fight. I said Connor's he's not going to win the fight, but he's going to land punches and win a round or two. I got all this blowback from the boxing community. So Connor lands punches, won maybe a round or something, and I'm like, oh, fuck, hell yeah, at least I got that right. And I'm walking off. I work the, the fight. I'm walking off, and I see Nate. And that whole arena is all boxing purist so i see nate and it's like oh ufc alumni like yeah. oh thank god it's like when i see another comic in a room at a party i'm like oh thank god we can talk yeah. so i see nate i'm like oh fuck yeah what's up dude i go to say what's up you know he's spicy dude he's, <laughs> yeah. and he's supposed to fight connor next yeah so he didn't like that i was pro connor the whole time that was my job it was a paid gig oh, my I see. sole job was to be the mma expert and sell people on connor beating Floyd. That was my yeah. job. That's what I was paid to do. I see. Do I believe all of it? No. That was my job. He thought it was real. So I was like, oh, what's up, brother? That was crazy, honey. He goes, man, fuck. I, you don't know shit about boxing. I was like, whoa. Bro, I and then love me and him were about to fight. <laughs> Yo. And I'm, I'm in skinny jeans and Gucci boots. That I look like sucked. such a tool. That would have sucked. And he's like, nice. he's like, something like, nice shoes, bitch, or something. I was, like, these? <laughs> I was like, these are Gucci, bitch. And we're like arguing about it. And then it was about to go down. And then uh, Steven Espinoza and my boss, Brian Daly, were like, if you get in any altercation, you're fired. And I was oh like, my all God. right, man. And then we just walked off. Oh, but that man. Like, caused this big storm. Yo, big so storm. This is, that's hilarious. Cause, like, and Nate, I've always loved the guy. Nate is so that dude that like, he, just, he takes it literal 100%. Yeah. Like, he really is about the shit. Like, yeah. it's so funny. I love it. I was like, wait, what? I, I thought we were boys. Fuck. Yeah, it was, it was so awkward. So did you so I saw him at Whole Foods like a year before and we're like taking pictures saying what's up. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, yeah, what's up? And then he's like, back the fuck. I'm like, whoa. Fuck you. I and love then it. I was like, oh, hold up, dude. I know I look like a tool in this fucking suit, but don't get it twisted, man, because yeah. then you're pushing me. You so, know? Who, so hold on. This is funny now. Wait, before we ask this question, you put her inside. Is the front gate open? Yeah. Or you left it open, right? Okay. So the, the question is, we'll have to edit that. Yeah. So now I got a question for you. Who wins a street fight? You were Nate Diaz. Now? Probably Nate. He's training. Yeah. When I was in the UFC, uh, street I don't that's just see I'm not a street fighter man. I don't like that shit. I feel like he's a street fighter. He's a street fighter. He'll fight anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. That's his thing. You know, I tell dick jokes. 
<laughs> yeah. So it's like you should win. Fuck, dude. I'm a lot bigger yeah. though, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's where I go. I, I go towards. That. Yeah, yeah. See, that's how it goes. I'm fucking dude. bigger, dude. Yeah, I'm Fuck bigger, that. man. I see red, dude. Yeah. I see fucking red, bro. You know I, what I'm saying? Yeah, I see red, bro. Just I swear, red. just trust me. Yeah, I, swear, I got this. So, so okay, okay. Who who's winning? Who's winning? Jake versus Diaz. Who's winning? That? It depends if if Nate takes it serious. Nate takes. I think he's which, taking it serious. I've seen his fun. his footage. He's sparring. He looks good. People are like making fun of him. I don't know what the fuck they're looking at. Like you see him spar that guy who's thirty and one, former world champion. He's, he's applying pressure. He's going the body. Like he looks fucking good. If Nate takes it serious, like a real fight, it's gonna be a tough night for Jake. I think he especially is, especially if it goes past three rounds. Jake or Nate's gonna win that fight. I mean, how could he not take it serious? It's like because Jake's a YouTuber. Yeah, but, you gotta realize that guy. Like Nate fought everyone at the highest level. He's fought Connor. Yeah. in his prime. He's fought Donald Cerrone. He's fought, you know, all these like huge names. And there has to be some sort of drop off when you're fighting Jake Paul. I respect the fuck out of Jake Paul. But when it comes to like fighting, is he's just not at the level that Nate's used to. So I'm just worried that Nate could lose it if he's not taking it serious. Because if Nate isn't putting the miles in like he usually does, like when he fought Connor, or if he's, he's not taking training serious, like when he fought Connor in those two fights. Like Jake hits hard, man, and yeah. early on, like, and he's a lot younger. He doesn't have the miles on him. Like, you can't sleep on Jake. He'll fuck you up, man. And I think all these MMA guys, including Anderson Silva, slept on him. Yeah, and that guy's not. Boom! Holy shit! Like, yeah, the dude can hit, dude. Yeah, athletic, young. Like, so if you if he, if Nate takes him serious and he can get out of the first three rounds, Nate's gonna beat him. Those first three rounds gonna be a motherfucker though, because Jake yeah. Jake Jake's a power. And I and I think Jake. Um, is he take this one? I think he has to take extremely serious because at this point, if he loses this, obviously he's get a massive payday regardless because the pay per view number is going to be insane. But um, after losing to to, uh, to Tommy, Fury, yeah, like if people like if he loses again, the gigs up. People are going to be like, okay, the gigs up. Yeah, then we'll find out how much he wants bo- wants to box because we're making all this money. You're undefeated. It's all good. When you lose two in a row and you're not getting the likes of Nate Diaz, Nick Diaz, Conor McGregor, and you got to fight like these middle tier guys, we'll see if he actually wants to box. We'll see how much he loves it. Because once all the cameras start coming, you stop selling tickets, how, how bad do you want it? Yeah. It's like stand-up. Will, it's, like, it's like a guy who's been doing stand-up and doing theaters. That goes away because your career goes like this, man. Yeah. You know? So everyone's career goes like this. And then it's like, well, how bad do you want to do stand-up? Did, yeah. you, did you only want to do it when you're making 100 grand a weekend? Or do you want to do it now when you're like grind? And you're in fucking, you know, Oxnard or some shit, and there's a hundred people. Yeah, well, that's a like, good. Are you point. doing it for the love of it? Or are you doing it for the fame? Well, that's a good point. Just in, in everything we do as people, like, uh, like I think the most successful people. That's why you know when you you talked about earlier about like me believing I could beat any of these people in a street fight. Little trolley, halfway serious. Devin Haney, I 100, I believe that one. I'm not gonna lie. I'll give you that. Nate one. is like, I'm like, oh, I kind of <laughs> did it for the fucking. Yeah. But there is a part of me that like I have to believe in myself have so much to. to that degree. Hundred. Because like. Everything that I've done, like I, I, I didn't do being like, oh, maybe I can do this. Like you'd never make it. I would never make it. It's also insane. Like any dream you have, it, it, when the first start of it's insane. Yeah. Think, I mean, just not to my own horn. It's like going from the NFL to UFC is nuts. Going from UFC to headlining comic, are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah. And if I would have listened or had any doubt, I would never make it, man. And yeah. I'm sure it's fuck not asking the internet what they think. Yeah. Because you know it's just a dark world. Yeah. Well, it's it's the world where everyone who is not doing the things that they want to do is looking at people who's doing the things that they want to do and they're saying fuck you because you're doing it yeah and it's it's the insecurities in themselves that's why they're doing it they're yeah so mad that they didn't take the risk yeah which which i get it but like to, to word to the wise is kind of like you have to have that like just complete just dogged determination of like nah i'm gonna do this shit no matter what and you gotta and, be a bit crazy and yeah yeah and and you have to be a little crazy and that's what i think uh obviously nate has but i also think that's what Jake has. And I think when I had the conversation with Nate, he was mentioning how like this Jake is taking this fucking serious. Cause like it's everything to Jake. Cause I, I do think his career is kind of on the line here. Cause if he does beat Nate, that Connor fights there. Yes. The Nick fight is there. Even yeah. Nick Diaz, like the major fights. If you lose two losses in a row, it's going to be tough, man. Those yeah. big names aren't going to fight anymore. I'm so excited. And if Nate loses, it's like, it's tough because the, the knock on Jake has always been in the MMA community. Oh, these are fixed. Not real. Yeah. Jake's not a real boxer. Well, if he knocks out your boy Nate, what are you going to say now? And I asked and Nate. what's Nate do? And I asked Nate specifically on the pod when he was here. I said, 
Because I, I always, I've always been like, oh, these fights are fixed. But the the Fury one made me feel like, well, he won that. They gave it to him. Not Telling fixed. you they're not fixed. Yeah. Well, then I asked Nate, and I I knew I, I knew the response I would get would be the same response where you he didn't like what you said. He said, "Fuck you" in person, whatever, because of like that altercation of the yeah. announcing. I knew that I would get a real ass answer from him, and he was straight up like, "I I wish it was fixed so I could snitch on him." And yeah. he said, "Not that I'm a snitch, but like I'd love to call him on that shit." And and Nate's like one of the reason people love him because he's so authentic. So that that was my thing. Like, if you think this is fixed, you think they could pay a Diaz brother any amount of money and tell him that they're taking a fall? In he a said, fight? "No way." There's no not way. amount of money in the world you could pay those guys. Yeah, that's how you know it's real. But also yeah. to the point of like Ben Askren getting knocked out, Woodley getting knocked out. I know both those guys. That their pride, there's not an amount of money you could pay them to take a fall in a fight. Same thing. It fucks them, dude. Fucks their legacy. Like Woodley has so much pride. Ben Askren, world champion, won the Heisman as a fucking wrestler, basically in college, like dude, Olympian. Yeah. Like, and you're gonna, you think they're gonna, you can pay him enough money to take a fall? No, dude. That's stupid. Well, now too, like Jake's been boxing for how many years? Full time. For With like, the top trainers, is all it been resources. Like four years. Yeah, four years. Fuck, Athletic dude. young kid, hits hard. Yeah. I think he I think he trains every day. Like I don't think it's it's not a game anymore to him. He has to. Yeah. Just to eat, try and make up the so gap. If he wins this fight, you think he has the potential to fight Conor McGregor? Yeah. That would be so fucking cool. Like even though I want I said this on the pod with Nate, I I'll say it now. I want to see Jake lose just cuz like Why? I don't know why. Just cuz I think because when he turned fucking um um Woodley into a meme, I've just been like, "Oh, I just want to see Jake become I get a meme." It. But it's not like I don't like the dislike the guy. You know, I don't dislike no, him I love all. Jake and Logan. I think, yeah, I can, when when Jake first came on the scene with the box, especially when he fought Ben Askren, because of like a tight-knit UFC alumni, I was like, no, he can't beat Ben. This is fucking nuts. This well, he nuts. smoked Ben. And then when he smoked him, I was like, God, oh, the kid has some talent. <laughs> yeah, he smoked and then, uh, and then against Woodley, like Woodley's my guy. But then I found myself, maybe it's because I can relate to the hate that Jake gets. I, can, you know, I get a lot yeah. of hate. So then I wanted to see him win to prove people wrong. Because people were just hating on him so much. I was like, why are you hating on the guy for because he wants to fight? Yeah. Why hate on him? So then I started rooting for him. I, well, no matter who he's against. What do you think in relationship to like, because like Logan, KSI, and, and Jake, I'm not saying in a versus like who wins here, but like it feels like from the outside looking in that like Jake takes this the most serious out of anyone. See, I wouldn't consider those other guys boxers. Like Jake's a boxer that came from YouTube. Those other guys are YouTubers trying to box. Jake's but you, way more but committed. You don't think Jake was a boxer? I mean, he, I mean, he was a YouTuber who became a boxer. Same but he's thing. full time in it. Those now. guys are doing it. Just, again, if you, if we said the arena is going to be a quarter full, you're only going to make a hundred thousand dollars. Those guys aren't fighting. I think Jake would still fight because he loves boxing. I think Jake's an actual boxer. You gotta respect the fuck out yeah, of him. Yeah, you got to respect it. Who's committed to it? Logan and KSI. If all those eyeballs aren't happening and they're not going viral, they're not doing it. Jake's going to do it. I think yeah. we're going to find out. He loses to Nate. You're going to find out. Damn, that's so exciting, man. It's dope, right? Fuck. And there's just a lot of pressure on this young kid who could do anything. Yeah. He could fucking race his brother uh, crab walk and millions of people tune in. And he'd make yeah. money. It's a fact. He can do it. So he decides to choose the hardest profession, boxing. Ever. And yeah. fight other like <laughs> yeah. legit fighters. Yeah. You're out of your mind, dude. I like it, man. It's dope. I don't get how people hate on it. It's I don't. Dope. I definitely don't hate it. I just, I, for some reason, I just want to see him lose. Meme. I get I it. I just want to see the meme. Yeah, I get it. You know? Because he's never been knocked out. Like on any of these fights, you know, like he's been hit rock. The only thing with Nate too, like I don't think if Nate wins, it's not gonna be a meme, unless Jake's like against the ropes, getting like you know. But do you think Nate's do you think, not a one punch? Okay, knockout. I was gonna ask you. Do you think he can knock him out? No, he he can beat him with volume. Like Nate's thing is volume. He's like a fucking Sacramento fucking zombie. He just walks forward and has a great chin and walks forward. You know what's funny? I was I was reading comments on the pod. And they they were. It's like. You say that, and like you're you're coming from a perspective like you kind of know because you you've watched the fight game, you've been the fight game, you've lived it. And then I see comments like a comment said exactly that, like Did literally it? that. And I was like, sometimes these motherfuckers know what they're talking yeah, about. Sometimes they do. Yeah. Like the super fans are really there. Yeah, if they know their shit, like Nate Nate's a volume puncher. So his thing is cardio volume puncher. He's not he's not a one shit one shot guy. Yeah, he's he's gonna beat him down over rounds, over rounds, over he, rounds. How old is he? Thirty eight. Yeah, but he, he he can take a shot. He's never been knocked out. He's been he's been head kicked TKO'd but never officially knocked out cold. Yeah. Is Jake the first one to do it? Fuck, that would also be insane. You that think would Jake be knows a that? meme, man. Yeah. If Jake knocks him out cold, I feel like 
I'm not gonna lie. When I was on the pod with with uh, with Nate, and I said that at the end, I was like, I want you to beat him because I want you to turn him into a meme. And then I was also like, but if you lose, he's gonna turn you into a meme. Yeah. I don't think he liked that. No, no, Hell yeah, no. no, yeah. But th- like I said, Nate's not gonna one like you're not gonna see in the first round like Nate with a big right hand out cold. What if he Nate, did though? Insane. It'd be the biggest meme of all time. Besides, if Elon and Mark Zuckerberg fought, whoever got not if someone I don't think anyone finishes anybody. But if like let's say Elon head kicked Zuckerberg, <laughs> I love it's the, the biggest theoretical. So it's fun. the biggest meme knockout of all time. Ever. It would just be like, they would just be like making, put like memes, social media shit, knocking the other one out. Like, uh, of all time. Because they released the Threads thing and the Twitter beef. And, and Threads see, is bombing. Yeah, like it, it was dope for like, what, four, four days? Four hours. Four, four, not like, <laughs> like four days. Yeah, but, but Mike, you know, Mike, a lot of, I run my social media now, but the, I have help with some of it. And they signed me up for it. I'm like, I don't want to be on there. I don't need another social media app. This is exhausting. And I, Twitter. I went to them like, oh, it's a shitty Twitter. I don't want this. It so felt, I, I just didn't, if it was something completely different, I get it. The exact yeah. same, I'm good. Like literally the exact same. And it, it, it is, it's interesting because like everyone was so, I remember everyone was so hyped on it. And then they just like, what the, the person, I think like the hours used went like n- next to nothing versus like what it was. They've lost you, like 40% of their uh, users or something yeah. like that. Everyone just went back to Twitter. Yeah. Well, you, which has now what, changed their name to X. Have yeah, you seen that? Yeah, yeah. It can't be the same thing, dude. But well, then why are we doing it? Well, the libs want to be on there because they think Mark Zucker, you know, they think Elon Musk. is. They want to give all their info. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, I love, I love, I fucking love Elon Musk. I don't care what anyone says, man. I want to see that Me guy. Me too. Fight, so. Huge fan. Yeah. Huge so, fan. so why do you think that he changed it to X? Just to rebrand, refresh? I feel like isn't one of his kids named like X or some shit? I, his kids' names are weird. That's coming from a guy. I think one is named X. Names. Yeah, I'm sure. Let's X R like X Pi or three. Yeah, but I think they made shit. it just X though. Yeah, I don't, just I don't know. X. Yeah, but like, but I think he's doing just because to put his stamp on it. Like, I own it. It's kicking ass. Yeah. Forget the old tweet thing. It's called X now. It, this is my. Shit. Have you been using Twitter lately? Yeah, it's been the best it's ever been. Yeah, I stay on Twitter. Yeah, it's my favorite app of all. People time. that complain are like, I'm leaving. Like, okay. Next to Snapchat. Uh, shout out Snapchat. My favorite. Snapchat's app. coming back, right, bro? Snapchat has been incredible. Like, they're the only platform. That they, I think they pay like, I don't know, some crazy amount of creators to make content on their platform. Like they pay, bro. Like everyone tells me that too. I just, I, I just, I, bro. I'm listen, 40. I don't know how much I can put it in this, but like I'm telling you right now, there's not another platform that makes me as much money as Snapchat. I've, everyone tells me that. I met some dude at like uh, I think they Howie Mandel's, like, and he makes like, I think he, he told me one month he made like three mil. Bro, like he's like the number one guy on Snapchat. Yeah, I was like, how much? That might have been Dobrik or something. Some crazy shit. But like, they're they're paying like I don't know, 50 percent of ad revenue or some crazy shit. Nuts. Like, so you're just for me, it's like I'm posting the same stuff I would post on like an Instagram story, but because like how many you post, they put ads in between. So like, they're really helping creators. Like, I'll be than, honest, I just don't understand. Like, I got on there, I'm like, I, I don't know. What the well, fuck if you have do. a following, basically, it's just like an Instagram story. So it's like if you're posting, like if I post right now a story of, oh, I'm doing this pod and I post this and I post like a workout thing, it's just posting stories essentially. So you just post whatever you post on Instagram to Snapchat? No, I t- right now. You give I, it some more premium content because yeah, right, you're making money. Yeah, so right now I, I post like pretty much like my workouts or my whole day, everything I'm doing in the gym or like the people that I have involved or like any content I'm shooting, it's like a lot of behind the scenes stuff, like 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 full, like almost like a whole vlog of and the day. people dig that. Yeah, and and – like I said, I could post that same because it's just the same story format. Yeah. Like if you would post on Instagram and watch the thing, but they're they're putting ads in between like every I don't know if it's every five or every ten they That's throw dope. an ad and they they give you like a really high return. That's dope. Which is just like unheard. And of. I know Twitter's paying too, but have you have you got into their subscription program? Like you have to be verified. You got to apply for yeah. it. I but have the subscription, but I don't see how you monetize videos yet. I but I I looked into the rules because I was like, why why haven't they uh, giving me monetization? You have to hit. Some like five million impressions over a certain amount of tweets. Like you can't tweet five million times. You have to hit a certain amount of impressions with a, f- a limited amount of tweets in order to apl- like qualify for it. To get the ads on your yeah. videos. Got it. Five million is a lot, Doug. That's a fuck ton. Yeah. yeah. On Twitter. But I'm trying to think. I feel like I've hit that though. I don't I've know hit why. it a few months. But to do it like every month to show you say in the program. God damn. Doug. I hit that shit every month. But yeah. I haven't seen the I haven't seen the ads thing. Yet. And you've applied for it? I don't know. I honestly don't know if I. Done you have it. to I, apply. I, I have the subscription thing set up, but but anyways, the point is like I'm just like these these apps are like really changing. Like I feel like they're becoming way more competitive with each other because like TikTok, 
all these things are like trying to like TikTok itself now too. They have like a new creator program where like if you post up more than a minute, they get like you get like higher CPMs. And before oh, it was like dope. they pay you cents. But I have a video of me asking Nate who's gonna win in a street fight. It has like two million views. I have like I have like a thousand dollars from that's that dope. video from one video. Yeah, that's dope. And it's just like they're all just competing now for for like eyeballs because everyone's kind of doing the same stuff because now everything has. But thank God, because YouTube suppresses things. Like, I'll say something on a pod, and then they put a 21 or over label on it, oh, or bro. they suppress it. The and then what? when you get the 21 or older label, I don't know if you know the this. These are dead. Well, because it, then it gets, in order to watch it, you have to click, yes, I'm 21. Sign in. But then also, if it's 21 or older, they stop recommending the algorithm. Yep. It won't make the main page. Yeah. So then your views go, vroomk. Yeah. I deal with that five <clears throat> times a week. Bro, then and then they, I ask them like, "What I do?" and they won't tell you. You're like, all right, dude. Well, I have a rep. They they help me out a lot more. But like, I had a, I had Nate on here, and because of the weed, it, you get the age restriction. Any drugs? That, that pod was on track to get like two million views. I bet. Now I it's hovering around like three, four hundred thousand, because there's zero reach. There's like once you hit that, because I saw it, it was like based on my other videos. I'm looking like. It was like four or five times these other video that has a million. Yep. I was like, oh, this is gonna have like two, three million views, and then. Five hours go by, age restriction, and it literally goes like this. Like, imagine the views and it just goes boom, boom dead. You. It sucked because like that pop was so good, it was so fun. Like, and YouTube's it's they're in this it's this weird like censoring. Yeah, it's like just, who, who's dictating this? And I don't if know. you ask them, they're like, don't know what to tell you. Yeah, like, you can't give me any direction. I'm like, nope, sorry, figure it out. You're like, I've been trying for two years now, man. Yeah. You just keep flagging me. I yeah. hate it. I, it, I fight with them all the time. But what are you? What are you getting flagged for? Does it say just the swearing or like? It might be swearing, but they say just don't swear in the first two minutes, and the algorithm doesn't pick it up. If if we talk about if you talk about the the pandemic, yeah, Newsom, any Trump. If you say Trump, yeah, Tate. I know if you talk about Tate, they even fucking get it flagged. Oh, uh, yeah, everyone's dealing with it. I just don't. If they I, don't, I don't agree know. with it, or you get on the radar, you're screwed. Like I love YouTube because, like, obviously that's where I came up on. Obviously outside of Instagram, but I I really wish they would go back to like 2017 YouTube, where they left us the fuck alone, bro. Like, it, let me just and let the people if they want to watch it, watch it, right? Or put up a warning as the video's going. Hey, 21 or over, someone's smoking weed. Yeah, but don't limit it, dude. Well, like, like who are you to limit this? Yeah, it's like interesting when you say limit. I don't think people understand. Like, we sound like we're complaining about fucking dumb shit, but like your no. your video literally. No one can find it. It goes from like, you could see this if you go on YouTube versus like, because I would type Nate Diaz and my video would have been number one because it was most relevant. Yeah. You don't even see the video. You got to like, and then when you find the video, it's like blurred out and you got to click it and then you got to sign in. And it's just whatever. It is what it is. It just, it just makes it more like cumbersome as a creator to like create and just like, the thing is just sharing opinions. I'm just like, I wish, I mean, I know there's just new platforms like rumble and like, you know, kick for streamers and all these things where it's like less censored, but like, I don't understand why. Cause YouTube's so massive. I do get why. Cause like they want to protect advertisers and all this stuff. But at the same time, it's like, like you said, there should just be some sort of like different sort of review process. Cause like, it's that that pot I did with him. Like this this guy smokes and all this stuff. Like it's not like we're sitting and be like, hey guys, you should go smoke weed. No, it's, it's like, just what he does. Yeah. And also, and who are you to dictate what people are offended by or not? Like, it'd be different. We're I'd love here to doing talk cocaine. to the board and sit down with them. And be like, wait, what's your background? What offends you? Why? Yeah. And then you're gonna limit my monetization? Like this is stupid. Yeah. And it's also just besides the money, it's just like the the reach. It's just the reach. Like, yeah. People it people you. do want to see this stuff, and it's just it makes it. It's censorship is definitely a thing and it's definitely gotten more complicated. And like, as a creator, it's interesting. Cause like I noticed, still, and I've talked about this before on pause, but there's things that I would love to just say that I'm like, uh, I kind of have to like play this fucking, not play this role, but like just not say certain shit that I know is going to offend people that they're going to just be like, Oh, we got to take this out. And, like, I, and I refuse to censor myself. So you know, with firing the kid, me and Brian, like we're constantly dealing with it and affects the views tremendously. Yeah, but I like we can't sense or we'll lose the fan base we do have. Yeah, and so we refuse to do it and we're, we're suffering from it. It's fucked, man. It's so annoying. What's a, out of all your pods? Which one you have the most fun doing? I feel like the what's, what's the one with uh, Chris Delia? Uh, Golden Hour. That one's fun. Probably finding the kid just because it's twelve years now, dude. Fuck. Twelve years, man. Brian's like my best friend, so it's like he's been through some shit and we're just still going strong. Probably that. I one. love Brian. Brian's the best. That guy's hilarious. He's the man. best. So probably that one, just because it's, it's twelve years. Twelve years, Doug. Whoa. Twelve years. We, we were talking about this a little bit. And it goes in like the house. this. Yeah. Well, it has to. Yeah. But twelve years, man, is like twelve years on the internet is like uh, fifty years in real. Ten thousand hours of bullshit. I, 
Yeah, yeah bro. That's insane. Starting his garage, man. It's taking us crazy places. It's dope. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the home base, you know? Yeah. Me and him are touring together. We haven't toured together in because I've been doing my thing tour and he does his. We haven't got together in like, I don't know, five years. We just announced a date together. Like a joint tour. Well, just like we're doing, we're going to announce more. But we're doing the first one in Covina, September 8th and 9th in uh, Covina, California at the Laugh Factory there. So I'll go on for 30 minutes and Brian goes on for 30 minutes. Like we've never, we haven't worked together in like five years. Because we've been so busy like doing our own thing. Yeah. And I was like, dude, we got to get back to get, get the band back together. Yeah. What do you miss the most about like when you first started all this stuff? Is that like obviously things have changed, like things go like this and like energy towards it? Because, man, like I'm not going to lie, like I'm fucking 34 now. I started YouTube shit when I was fucking, I don't know, 20, 23 or yeah. something like that. It's just like it's different. It's all changed. It's a business now. Yeah. That's what's weird. It's a business. And I think for me, like when I was at Showtime for six years, I was like, the talent. They took care of booking, everything, the shows. I'd have to worry about it, just show up and be silly and break down fights and be silly. Now, like, I, I left that and I started my own network. And it's like, you're a boss. You got these other sh- all these other shows. Yeah. I got shows every day. So it's, it's like work now, you know? Yeah. When before, it's just, you didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't care about money. Yeah. I didn't have to, you know, feed kids and my girl and pay mortgages. You know, it's just yeah. a different thing now. It's weird, man. Yeah. It's still fun. I have the best job in the world. It's just, it's like, that's your job, dog. You got to do it. That's yeah. the thing I always talk about. People talk about, oh, you love what you do. You don't work a day in your life. Because I love what I do, but like, it's still work, bro. But this is my fourth podcast today. Yeah. So, I so it's a big fight week. So it's like, it's just today's like, and obviously you're, you were a boy, so it's easy to do. But it's like, it's a job, man. Like, it's my fourth one. I've been talking since 8 a.m. Yeah. Like, how the fuck do you do that? Well, the first one, Shop Show, it's all about UFC 291, so I can talk fighting all day. Yeah. So I can break that down. That tees me up. With Brian, we just we talked about ghost and shit for, for yeah, an yeah, hour yeah. and a half. Easy bullshit with your boys. And the third one was breaking down the big boxing fight, Spence Crawford and UFC 91 with Luke Thomas, who's like one of the most brilliant minds in the game. So I just toss it up, and he slams it in. So that's easy. Yeah. And then we're here. It's all good, baby. Dude, it's fucking I can't ride. see straight, but all yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. vision's blurry. Yeah. Do Haven't people, eaten today. Whatever. Do people know about the the, the nicotine use? I'm sure. Yeah. I use it nonstop. <laughs> yeah. Sponsored by him. Like, yeah, Rogue. I stay on Rogue nonstop. Oh, I brought him Rogan. Rogan's like, what the fuck is that? I'm like, oh, these are my favorite. That's how I got the sponsorship. Yeah. Because I, I just started him. Addicted to him. I started with it. I bring on Rogan. Let me get one more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I I, put me the in sour there. apple's filthy, right? It's good. But I, uh, I was on Rogan. He said, what the fuck is that? I'm like, it's nicotine, dude. I started it because it's supposed to be good for your brain. I could use all the help I can get. Nicotine gets a bad rap because of cigarettes. Yeah, exactly. But you take out the way it's delivered. And if you make it a healthy alternative, it's good for yeah. your brain. No, it's for sure. It's so also Ro- good for your gut. It's Rogan's for like, let me get one of those. And I talked to him. He's like, oh, this is dog shit. And like spits it. I'm like, hey, man. But I was like, whatever, Rogue. I love it. Hit me yeah. up. And they hit me up. Oh, on his show? Yeah, yeah, right. Like a week after, like, oh, it's all, it's all thing. Glad you love it, and start talking to him. And yeah. yeah, is that how most of your like deals come about? It's just like, like, just like word of mouth stuff. Like, not that? really. That that one was rare because they're, they're they're owned by Swisher Sweet, like the fucking you know, like the, oh yeah, the, the blunt, blunt rolls. Yeah, yeah, they work with like Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Oh shit! And my dumbass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but not really. Yeah, most of it comes from. Yeah, most of it's organic. Like if I fuck with their stuff, I have like my agent reach out to them or something. Yeah. Have you ever had issues like on the business side of things with like this? We've talked about a little bit about this. I don't know how much you can even share. About the, in regards to? Like, I guess, I guess the better question is in your, in your 12 years of doing this, podcasting, like getting the brand deals, like working with, with, with brands, have you had any like problems with employees or with like brands or like have you issues Not- that you had to like overcome? Not really. I mean, I'm trying to think. When I was at Showtime and I got COVID, they wanted to fire me because I got COVID. This is like, what? how do you I was fire like, someone for getting COVID? Oh, I was a like, good luck. Like the lawsuit is that in my contract? Good luck. But uh, shout out to. Uh, but why would they fire you if you had COVID? I don't get it. One of the lawyers just had it out for me that worked for CBS Showtime and was like, "Oh, this is the reason we can fire him." So they got on the horn. They had like this big meeting, and my boss Brian Day was like, "Dude, it's not good. You got COVID." I'm like, "What's that have to do with anything, dude? I feel great." He's like, "That's a problem." You're advocating that COVID's oh, not that bad. God. I'm like, dude, I don't feel bad. My cardio got better. And he started laughing. I'm like, no, I'm serious, dude. I ride my bike Need every that day. challenge. Yeah, I was like, I feel great, man. Yeah. He's like, you can't say that. I was like, 
bro, if you fire me though, like where's in my contract it says if I get COVID, you can let me go. Like that's you a remember the Rogan thing daddy. when they're like they they was it on CNN they put him and he did like a video like a horse pills. Fit. Yeah, the horse pills, but like it was a video of his put face yellow on him. and they yeah they made him all like distorted. Yeah, bro, bro, that's so crazy. That was like it's crazy because that was a real thing. No, like real how thing. the fuck? It's you know what's so weird about it now. Everywhere I go in California, I go places. I was at Disneyland the other like like the other week, and uh, I'm looking and I'm like. No one gives a single fuck about this now. It's and all like, over. And it's just like no one bats an eye. But it's like the reality is this is the crazy part. It's still there. It's still there. It's yeah, but that's all message. My favorite is when I'm driving down the highway and I see someone wearing a no, mask. No, that's the worst thing. In, in the, the car world. by themselves. I'm like, bro. Oh, bro. you can't be my foxhole. If shit hits the fan, you're the first one to die by. That person is a psychopath. I don't think that person understands what it's a mental world. illness. I mean, it's like that's the craziest thing that I've ever seen, actually, is people in their car by themselves with a mask on. Like, I can understand maybe if you're an Uber driver or some shit, you're like, you're still trying to protect yourself. Like, if at you this don't point, get the flu or something, I guess. Yeah, but like, who's giving you COVID in your car by yourself? When you're by yourself and you have the AC on and it's, you know, you got the mask on, I'm like, you're the biggest pussy in the world, right? Yeah, like, I'm like, scared. You know you're not going to make it. If I'm, also, I'm also avoiding them. Because oh, I'm like, dude. this person might just hit me. Oh, dude. I mean, they're not doing well. Think That's, how scared you got to be, though. I almost feel bad for them. Like, oh, you're so scared of life, dude. That's what yeah. it is. And like, there's some people like that, and it sucks. They're just so terrified of like that thing, dude. You know what's crazy? Like, that's when we really became friends. Was that was the yeah? Because I found your gym because your only gym open during COVID. Yeah, I walked in. It was like that Spider Man. Yeah, Spider Man. Like, like, you, <laughs> you, we're friends right away. I'm like, yeah. this is lit, dude. I'll be here every day. It was so crazy. That was such a such a good time. I, I hate to say this because it's like it was such a bad time for so many people. But because I was like, no, nah, fuck this. And there were so many people who were also like, yeah, this is crazy. So many people came to that. So gym. many people rallied around your fucking gym. And then we go in there. It was like a fucking, it was like MTV spring break. Bro, it was a fucking party every day. So much fun. I couldn't believe it. There was oh, actually, it was fun, there was times when like, there was like, I don't know, man, like 50 people waiting in line out the door. And then people would wait. Cause we had, to, we had to start putting like time limits on people's workouts. And you were like a celebrity in that bitch. People were crazy. like pictures and shit. It was, crazy. it was nuts, dude. It was fun. It was like really, really fun because you know, it's obviously all the like-minded people who are like, yo, I still really find this important. And then it's like years later, this was the most important thing you could have been doing yeah. the whole time. Yeah, yeah. You, you should right have told you. One, yeah. And it was just, it was just, that was the, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't feel good, but part of, part of it kind of feels good. Obviously it was bad for so many people. But like I knew, dude, in my in my core, I was like, "This is so wrong." And this you fought so, it, man. Yeah, I fought it, yeah. I did a whole documentary. I got a whole documentary coming out. Oh, over. really? Sick. Yeah. I, they were fucking with you hardcore, man. Bro. Remember, what? I called you. Like, hey, there's like a van and there's like detectives outside. Yeah. You remember, bro? I've. They're they like, were, "What are you doing?" I'm like working out. Yeah. I was there every day. They had sent someone there, and it was such a it was such an interesting time because like it, it was just weird how. It was because, like you just said, how getting fired because you had this thing and they didn't want how you, how you to talk about it in a certain way. Yeah. I was getting the sort of like treatment from the public officials because of the platform that I had. Correct. Not because my gym was open. Because, because there was gyms right around the corner that was like bigger with more people open the same time, but it wasn't as popular. Uh, like, you know, there wasn't someone in their social media every day being like, I'm training. Correct. So like they would just literally drive past that gym to go to my gym to be like, the we're attacked. Yeah. And it's like, when you look at the, and then you look at the, how I'm fucked like, up is that? Cause it's all public record. You could look at the amount of counts and I had yep. like 66 and they had like four and eight. Like plant fitness had like two and they're it's massive. Still open. And then what else I found interesting is like the other businesses around you were assholes to us. Like, I, like they like, can't park here. I'm like, there's nobody here. Like you can't park in the spot. Yeah. Are you a member of zoo gym with Brad? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, nope. Can't park here. Yeah. I was like, was, I can't park here. And there was no one there. No. It was so, it was like, everyone it was, was just a like, weird time. You. But it like, it brought everyone closer together. Like the real ones, that's what, it brought everyone closer together. Yeah, that's a fact, man. That's such an interesting time. I just, I'll never, I'll never forget like how erratic it was. And then like everyone now is just like, we don't give a fuck. It, it made me scared because I realized how easy manipulated people are and how many sheep there are. I was yeah. like, oh, we're fucked. Yeah, but like it was like, actually something like really like we're fucked, dude. I was honestly, I'm not going to lie. When it first happened, you know, you saw like I saw the videos from like China where it's like there's people dead on. They had like some people dead on the floor, or, like laying on the floor, whatever they were doing. I yeah. just saw some videos. Probably fake news, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. And I was like, oh, well, it's like that. That's kind of scary. But then we like, were all scared at first. Yeah. And yeah. then I got it. I was like, that's it. Yeah. But then for some people it was really bad, you know, so but it's like from my perspective, it was not bad. So I'm yeah. not scared of this anymore. Yeah. 
it's a, it's an interesting thing because like people will hear that and be like, well, but other people they were hurt, but it's like that's the thing that I kept like trying to I tried to like understand was like the most people who were having like severe complications with it had other things that were complicated about them already. Yeah, if they'd like, be in zoo culture and work their ass off, they yeah. wouldn't be having these issues. Yeah. And, and you guys want to shut this down? Well, and then the biggest thing for me that really frustrated me was the whole, like, the the misallocation of, like, energy towards shutting this down versus shutting that down. Because when I would have the conversation with the health officials about, like, well, what about the airports? They're wide open. It, yeah. They'd be like, well, that's not our jurisdiction. So I was like, so... COVID just doesn't yeah. spread in that jurisdiction, Not but they spread in this one. This and they're like, time. we don't, we, we could ask someone for you. We don't know what to tell you. So whenever I got those weird answers, I was like, this doesn't make sense, yeah, but yeah. that's a fucking crazy thing. Like that. We idea. Could, we can't even talk about it. And it's like, it's years ago. Like, let's just like, we can reminisce on it. It's all good. You guys made mistakes. You guys were wrong. It's all good. We had a yeah. good time. They want yeah. to shut that down. Yeah. It's weird. Just like, let's forget about it. Fuck. dude. I saw you tweet out the other day. You're ready to be a dad. Bro, I want a family so about bad. Time man. we grow up. dude. I know, man. No more jumping out of pools and lifting bitches. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta start lifting babies. That dude. pool's looking pretty dirty out there. Yeah, I was like, no, oh, Bradley's growing up. That pool's dirty as shit. <laughs> he ain't nah, having no pool parties in the nah, summer. No, really? That pool's dirty as shit. Yo, no, wait, that's the no problem, though. Because my pool guy's supposed to be out here like yesterday, but he wasn't. He hasn't been here forever. Dude. Yo, no, 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 don't brown. play. Don't There's play. no bitches in that pool, bro. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, Brad, oh, Bradley doing his thing. Bradley growing up. Yo. So last time I was here, that pool was pristine, bro. There's Yo. Bitches yeah, everywhere. I got, a, I got a garden now. Like People no, were taking that's... shots and shit. <laughs> Bradley and no. Sador in a robe and a fucking bro. cigar. I was like, how are you doing, sir? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. shit. No one lives here anymore. I know. Just dude, me. You're growing dude. up, dog. I'm ready to have a family. What 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 did you wake up one day like ah uh, yeah I quit well, hanging out with nineteen year olds <laughs> yeah like no I li like obviously I like being in the mix because like I'll be honest like it kind of like I don't want to say keeps you young but it keeps you kind of like with the shit that's continuously because like the truth is I think it is really important for especially creators you have to constantly reinvent yourself have to have your ear to the ground yeah you yeah. have to. Um, but really, it just became. You sound I mean, like Kevin Spacey right now. We keep going. Really? <laughs> just, no, 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 kids. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. No, I meant like the younger. Like generation. I like eighteen year olds around me all the time. No, no, no. no, no, no I'm just just younger yeah. generation. I'm with you because they, they they know what's like popping. Yeah. Like I don't. I, I don't like, know what the fuck the TikTok dance is. Yeah. Oh, Nor do I give a fuck. I would never do that. Yeah. By the way, that's insane. TikTok. Even when I remember when that came out, I was like, I'll, I cannot do this. Like Jacob probably did a few. <laughs> you probably did a few. Huh? TikTok did dances. dances. Uh, fuck no, none. Fuck never. Really. 23? Oh, okay. you're only 23. Goddamn. 24. Type he's a baby. Of, yeah. He's a baby. He's getting shredded now. Never did it. Damn. But you I'm just surprised. woke up one day. I was like, ah, I got to yeah. start. So I woke up here. one day and I was like, I'm 34. And I was like, okay, I keep, I can keep doing this shit. Next, you know, I'll be 40. And I just, I, I know that like, I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing, but like I've kind of just shifted my focus on this content in general, like focus more on the podcast stuff. Um, and I've just realized like I really I've always wanted a family, but I don't know. It's just it's just a, I'm just ready for a different part of my life. Like I have everything. It's the best thing too. You know, I've done a bunch of cool shit in my life. Nothing better than being a dad. Like yeah. It's so dope, dude. And like you're missing out. You're missing out on why you're here. You're yeah. here to procreate and make kids, dude. Yeah. And you're a good person. Like, the world needs more Bradley Martins. That would be a better place. So by you being selfish and just making fucking TikTok videos, hanging out with 21-year-olds, like, all right, good for you. It's so selfish, dog. Yeah, it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you, and at some point, like, you're going to want a legacy. And if you wait till you're 50 to have kids, all right, dude, if you wait till you're 40 to have kids, when that kid's 10, you're 50, dad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to so lie. Like, I mean, my, my issue, my big issue was just, like, Honestly, I'm be, I'll be straight transparent, man. I just played the bullshit game with girls for too long. Like where I was it's like. It's exhausting. Yeah. Um, it's fucking terrible, man. It like all your it, energy and especially the creator, like it sidetracked you from yeah. your actual goals. It was cool when I was like 24, 25, 26, 27. And then I remember around like 28, I was like, Dude, what am I doing? But I was so kind of like in it. It was and probably it was, doing well, crushing it. Still so doing like, well. I keep doing this. So I could just kind of like justify that like, oh, it's okay. But then like, I just realized like, I just focused not so much on girls, but I just focused so much on, excuse me, work that, you know, a few more years go by and I'm like, oh shit, I'm 32. What the fuck? And then I'm like, okay, nah, now nah, I really need to like lock this in. I need to like figure this out. I can't like, I can't just like try to just fuck some girl because I think she's attractive anymore. It can't be just about that. You no, know what man. I'm saying? At some point it's like, why am I doing all this? 
want to be 50 living in this place by yourself? Fuck how fucking no. sad that is. That's t- that's depressing. And you're calling me like, hey, you want to hang out? I'm like, no, dude. Yeah, do you have kids yet? Baseball game. What yeah. the fuck? You know, it's like it's just not a way to live, dog. Yeah, it's interesting how like, I don't know, man. Like, I I, I just got so caught up in work. That's fair because and you're still young, uh, yeah. young enough where you can make the change. When did you have your first kid? My son is seven, so I had my first kid at 33. Fuck, I'm behind, dude. You're all right, though. I always feel, and that's that's part of the thing that fucks me up is like, I'll be like, oh shit, like I'm it's late, I'm late now, you know. For guys, it's different. Yeah. Now, if a girl's 40 and don't have kids, it just the chance of a successful birth, pregnancy, yeah, goes down. So for girls, a little that clock's a little more like this. Yeah. But you're you're gonna meet the right one, and you're gonna know too. I and like Charlemagne said this, and he's wildly successful. Charlemagne goes, if you notice the most successful people, what's the one thing they have in common? They all have wives or girlfriends that hold them down. Yeah, Because they're man. not wasting time and energy and resources and ch- <clears throat> chasing all these random girls. They have the one thing that holds them down. Yeah. And he's and that's right. the thing. And, dude, I've, and I've seen that for years now. And it's like, now I'm starting to really recognize how actually important that is. But the question is, like, when do you know you have, like, exactly the right one? Like, I don't know if you, you ever know if you have the right. I knew from day one when I met her, I'm like, oh, she'd be a dope-ass mom. Because Brian has kids and she was so good with them. And I was like, oh, my God, she'd be such a good mom. Yeah. I've always wanted to be a dad. I love kids. Yeah. I would have 10 kids if I could. I love kids. My wife's a hater, though. She only wants three. But I would, I'd love like 10. I just I live for kids. I've, kids done, and, I've done everything. Though. You like kids, cars, and shoes. Yeah. That's what yeah, I know about you. Yeah, 100%. I love it. But being a dad, there's nothing better, dude. Like, I can't wait to get home. It's a Monday, bro. I got butterflies driving home to see my kids. Fuck. Nothing better. My kid's in baseball and he like he's getting good at it. It's so dope. Oh, it's dope, dude. And I can see his like the the, the little Kobe mentality in him. Like we'll be at the band cage and be like, again, it's forty pitches. Again. I'm like, this boy, where'd he get that? And his mom's like, geez, I wonder. That's how I was. Yeah. And then I can the tools that I have and the discipline you have, you pass that down to him. And now he's eating right. He's working out. He's coming to the gym with me. Like, think about you, if you had a son going to the gym with dad. Oh, man, it'd be so cool. You're fucking Superman. And you know yeah. your way around, so you're introducing them to this workout and that workout. Yeah. And you eat this, not that. And they eat it all up. And then they're seeing results. You're like, damn, dog. Make a little fucking Terminator. Or, my, dude, my son, like, he just gravitates towards baseball. He's done it all. He's a freak athlete, so he's good at everything he does. But he loves baseball. Baseball's tough, man. Baseball's super. You, know, you think he'll be tall like you? Yeah. I yeah. think he'll be 6'4", minimum. Nice. So... He loves baseball, but baseball's tough. And the league that he's in, well, the camp he's in is like elite kids, like a bunch of Dodgers kids are there, Padres. Like, they're fucking good, man. He's never played a game of baseball. He's only played with me. So his first week of camp, doesn't get a hit. But every day he wants me to work with him. So I'm working with him and his coach, how to hit, how to hit. Second week of camp, wins MVP. Goes for five for five every day. So just working with him every day, man. and then the following day seeing it pay off, you're like, oh, dude, this is the best. I need to have a kid, You see yeah. his face, you're like, dude, this is – it's, it's, it's better than being the heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah, the genetic thing is so crazy because it's like it's crazy how like actually so similar like I would be to my father or like my son would be to me. And that's such a cool thing. And it's also crazy we have this conversation like isn't like the population decline like the number yeah, one man. issue in like the kids. world? Yeah, we need more people. Is that, this is so weird because like we're so taught that it's the opposite. Yeah. Like there's too many people overpopulation, but it's like. It's actually literally the opposite. Oh, and it's so dope, dude. I'm telling you, man, change your life. And then it's weird, too, because, you know, you, you, your world, like, especially in the field we're in, like, revolves around you. Once you have kids, oh, dude, fuck everything else. Like, I could bomb on stage. Podcasts could eat shit. I don't care, dude. I come home and the kids, they don't give a shit. Then you don't stress about, like, being able to keep up or, like, how. Oh, yeah, that's why or- I work so much. Yeah. For them. For them, for sure. And that's but, a- but there's a dad grind. Like, my, my business manager can show me before I had kids how much I was making, when I had kids how much I make. You worked harder. It's just, it's naturally like that protective gene comes out. You get more creative. Your, your hustle goes from, and you're a hustler now, goes from this to this, dude. You don't even mean to. It's just those dad instincts instinct. kick in, dude. Fuck. It's dope. Fuck, dude. It's always just, it's all, yeah, finding the right fucking person. Like you said, I think the most important thing is if, as far as partner goes, that, that's the number one. Because when I think about it, that's I think, your curse. That's your curse because the, sure. the way you look, you're an attractive dude. You have you know resources to get any girl in the world. It's it's tough to find a legit one. That's your curse. Yeah. To find the right one. Heavy lies the crown, buddy. Fuck. 
But I, it's like you're like Batman. I'm like Batman. You're like Batman. Damn. Damn, it's a blessing and a curse. Fuck. But I know, I know, like what you said as far as the grind goes, as far as it making you work harder, and then like you said earlier about having like that that person that's like your your rock to make you better. That's what I. That's what I want more so than anything. Because you, you realize, like, don't get me wrong. You want to find a beautiful girl, and obviously that's what you're attracted to. But then they have to be a good person. They have to hold you down. That's gonna make you a better person. Then you realize, you realize that now, like, you get a certain age where, you're like, you know, those young girls and they're hot, whatever. Like, that's it doesn't mean shit, dude. It doesn't yeah. mean shit. It's not. It's not gonna lead you to happiness. One more hot chick that you hooked up with. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. The. Uh it's a left turn on this one, but um, did you see the did you see the the content with with uh, Schultz and, and Sina? We didn't really talk much about it. No, I just I just saw uh, oh, like it was a clip and I heard Schultz talking about it on his pod. Schultz yeah. is one of my favorite pods, Flagrant. Yeah, the the reason why I think I watched the clip where he was like kind of like roasting Steiny for like whatever the pile of the pod went, and uh, Schultz is like, does he have a like a degree in like psychology or something like that. He's a smart motherfucker. That's what makes him such a great comedian. Like he's very, very smart. But I think too, with what's name Steiny? Steiny. I think he felt like, like Steiny feels on a, on authentic. If that makes sense. Like yeah. inauthentic. Unauthentic. Yeah. yeah. So he was just like, he was reading that. And then Steiny was like texting while Schultz was talking. So he's like, Oh fuck this dude. Yeah. And then he seems like he was playing a character. And then he said on his pod, he was like, Steiny doesn't, like he's done the most with the least talent I've ever seen. He's a hustler, dude. Yeah, I'm sure. There's yeah. a reason why he's there. I, I don't know those boys at all. I've never seen the show. I, I don't know him, so yeah. I don't know the I don't know if he's talented or not. But he seems like he's doing something right. But when Schultz smells that, and then you're also talking about a, a high high level professional comedian who's gonna tear into you, but he did and psychoanalyze you too. So he's gonna destroy you, man. Yeah, because he he he. I'm not gonna lie. Like it was funny to me because like I know Steiny. Like he's a good dude. He's a good dude. He's a good dude. He has shitty moments, but overall, I think he's a good dude. I think he's. What's just the to knock on? Like, it has to be a talented dude if he's at that level. I assume he's definitely I, talented. Definitely at what? talented. Uh, at hustling, at talking. That's he's a good. talent. Yeah, he's definitely a talented guy. Um, but it's funny because when Schultz said about his character, there are times where I know that, like, because he'll play the victim a lot. Like with me, he'll try to like he'll try to like bully me and then get a reaction because it's funny for a clip and i get it because like i understand the value of that yeah like the big guy getting mad and shit uh but then like i think i think the thing with schultz is like i watched the pod and, and this was months ago by the way so this was like last november it was almost a year ago and they just re-released it uh i think he's gotten better since then but i definitely know like i've had moments with him where i'm like i know you're doing this like just to get a reaction like because Steiny off camera is similar to that guy but not that guy he's like heightened version where there, there's that but i think too with comics too it's like all we do is specialize in reading people. So if he smells bullshit, you know what I'm saying? So then he lights him up. Well, he lit him up though in a way that was like, I'll be honest, was kind of kind of not funny. Meaning like it was so spot on. Schultz can be mean, yeah. Like he just kind of, it almost like removed the comedy and was like, I'm calling you out. Like, in, like do you remember that? You saw it? That's what I'm saying. It was fucked. Like, it he, was funny to me because I know Steiny and I know Schultz. He's taking Schultz. a page out of Rogan's book. Rogan's the same way where if he sees bullshit, he calls you out and it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, I that's I've seen him it, do it to people. You're like, oh, I was thinking that. I'd never say that. Yeah, he he did. And then, like, it was interesting, like, to see the responses and to see how people defend or attack. It's interesting. But also, Schultz, you know, he's at a such a high function level. Like, I know Steiny's thing's hustling. Trust me, he doesn't hustle as much as oh, yeah. Andrew Schultz. That guy's a goddamn fucking... He's a fucking savage laser on that laser, shit. Dude. I was like, you don't I, want him on your bad side. Yeah, no, I, I want, I've been trying. He's to a great pod. dude. He's yeah. going to help you out however he can, but he's not, he's one of the f top three comedians. You don't want calling you on your shit. You know what I love? Rogan about, being number one, Schultz being number two. You think like they'll, they'll both go hard on you. Yeah. You know what I love about Schultz? He's the one guy who I know is like super fucking popping, doing his thing. He'll always respond to my text messages. Great guy. Always like right away too. Yeah, that guy's like on it. I'm like, how this guy does? Well, he's doing. I know he's doing tons of shit. He's one of the best. Yeah, I, I admire that about people because I have a sometimes a hard time with that because I'm so like so. I mean, maybe because like I'm doing so much social media shit. I don't know how much of his own social that he does. I think because like I'm constantly on the phone. I have sometimes I have a hard time. Like I'll see a text and I won't reply yeah. to it. I feel fucking bad sometimes and I'll just miss shit. Like I just think the worst at texting, but this guy's like he's like that. It. I've been trying to get him on for like a fucking year since I did his pod. Once he comes to LA, I'm sure he'll be on here. Yeah, yeah. He said he would. He said he would. I got to get him on. If not, fucking 
Oh, come on. He's yeah. the best. No, yeah. he will. Um, who, who is who's your favorite comedian right now? Oof. Either. It's tough because of my boy. Uh, Schultz's up there, of course. Yeah, this is a hard question. For yeah. Me, Chris De- I'm close with all of them. Chris DeStefano is one of my favorite. Do you know Chris? He'd he be was, a great guest for He you. was going to come on the pod, and then he got sidetracked with he's something. He's a savage. But I want him. I'd love to have he's him He's the best. The he's, so, he t- he's so funny. In person, he's funny. Good like, person. even off camera. So funny. You know who was like that that I met? He came to a photo shoot at uh, Zoo Culture, the old one. Um, Kevin Hart was one of the funniest people oh, yeah. that I've ever met, completely off camera. I was sitting doing stairs with Theo, him. Do you know Theo Vaughn at all? Yeah, I don't know him well. He's the funniest person on or off camera. That, that not mother- even close. I'm not going to lie. That motherfucker I've been trying to get on my pod since like 2017. He's a tough one. Yeah. He, I t- he, and he doesn't like, like, he's big in his own right. And he's one of those guys that doesn't really network or doesn't want to do shows. He doesn't like doing shows. Yeah, that makes He'll sense. He'll come on, but he does, he, he's not that guy who's going to plan before. Yeah. He might not be feeling good. So he, he's, he's a tough Kinda one. Kind of does what he wants. He's the funniest person. That reminds world. me, you know who that reminds me a lot of? Steve. Steve will do it. Really? The same, like, if, if he's doing it, it's like last minute. Yeah, fuck it. We'll do it's it. It's Theo. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then you play it. Like, we mean him had this big thing playing, and then just the day before he backed out, you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. But it's just, you can't be mad at him. You're like, yeah, that's Theo. That's what you yeah. get, man. He's I respect the best. that. I respect that. He he's, he's probably one of the, to me, one of the funniest. Like, I'll see, I haven't seen, oh, well, I've seen his stand up, but his, his, uh, his social content. So funny. You know who, you know who Th- kind of. Theo's great. The, for your pod, you'd be to wrap it up. Theo, to Stefano, uh, as far as comedians go. And then the best special I've seen this year is Big J Okerson. Big J had a great special. I Big J's from uh, Legion of Skanks. He's a great comic. You'd love Big J. He's torn with is Bert he Kreischer. LA? He's a New York guy who comes to LA all the time. Have to hit he's just up. a savage, dude. He's so funny. Yeah, he's I've been, so fucking I've funny. been hitting a Bert. He's like, oh, here, there. And then I, I, I still want to get, I, obviously, I want to get the whole circle, man. Bert, Tom. Um, I want to get fucking Theo. Bert's up the st- Bert, Bert lives up there, so Bert should be easy. No, he's just Bert. always doing something. Yeah, he's in movies now and shit. Fuck, dude, the machine. Fucking I know, dude. Asshole. Fuck you, Bert. You guys are blowing up. Man. No, but I text him and he's like, "Ah, oh, fucking busy." I'm like, "Motherfucker." And when Whatever. he's bu- he's like busy, busy. That yeah, I know. I respect it. I respect. He's it. on the I, road more than anybody. I, I, I understand these guys yeah. doing like incredible fucking shit all the time, and because like the touring shit's got to be just like insane. especially at Bert's level, like he because he gets a tour bus like. You know, I'm in Arizona, what is it? Uh, I'm at Phoenix, August 11th. I fly in, fly back. I won't do a tour bus and be away from my kids for any amount of money. He, do, he does that. Yeah, yeah. He, goes, also, he goes for months, bro. Yeah. What the and fuck? he has, like, all this guilt because he'll talk about how, like, he's missed his kids, like, birthdays and shit. I can't do that. There's not yeah. amount of money he can pay me. Yeah. You know, so, so I was talking to Schultz. He was saying that he's going to start doing arenas. Yeah. He's doing, arena, he's doing arena in Toronto, dude. Like how many people massive. is that? 20,000, 20,000 plus? I think it's 18,000. Bro, that's so fucking crazy. It's crazy how like the podcasting and the internet has made comedians one of the biggest things on the internet. For sure. Like, I mean, do you know Matt Reif at all? Yeah. Have you had Matt Reif on? No, so I've been talking to Matt and he's he's supposed to come on this show. Great guy. Um, yeah. You, I've never seen anybody blow up in my, I don't think in the history of comedy. I mean, Dan Cook blew up fast, but he was doing it for a while, but I've never seen anybody blow up like Matt Reif. You're talking about Two summers ago, he's like complaining he couldn't sell out Bricktown Comedy Club in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. well, Bur- and it goes from that to 150 worldwide theater arena tour sold out every every single show yeah. in, I think, less than six hours. I've yeah. never seen anything like it. And here's the thing. People want to hate on him. him. People want to hate him. The kid's fucking has the chops. He's funny as fuck. And b- before he was on Wild and Out and all that stuff, he was at the comedy store and laugh factor with us. Like since he was like 17. But he's dude. grinding. Grinding. Okay? It's yeah. not by accident. That doesn't happen anymore. Matt Rife is a savage dude. Works yeah. his ass off. Funny fucking dude. Gorgeous. That motherfucker's dying. Yeah, yeah. He's too pretty. Yeah, yeah. That's his problem. Yeah. He's too pretty. Yeah. I think that boy is fun. That's, that's got to be why he's also fucking blow, oh, blowing up his show. Sure. Yeah. And the, but it's also why he gets so much hate. Oh, he can't look like that and be that funny. No, he is, bitch. And then also when he was 16, he didn't look like that. He had buck teeth. Shitty feet. He had a glow up there. Yeah. Damn, that motherfucker. Glue yeah, I've been talking up. to him. I really want to get him on too. He's great because he he lost his father. Did he? Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about that. Anyways, you just want people on that's dad's dying. I'm like, Oof, no, that's fucking thing. sad. No, just like yeah. I, I want to talk to him about it because like you know, the, just you, you can know, relate what, to that. For what, sure. Yeah, relate to it. What it takes to kind of like move through that kind of shit. Yeah, boy's um, crushing it. But yeah, co- co- comedians on the internet are just like 
It's like different nowadays. Well, now it's you like, control it. There's no gatekeepers because now you can get your info out to the people and there's no like CBS or Showtime or HBO executive or gatekeepers that go, nope, not giving you a special. Or, nope, nobody's going to see this. I'll yeah. just upload it to the internet. Just do it myself. Let yeah, them put it on Twitter. And then you don't need a, a co-sign from Showtime, HBO, or Netflix. Like, like do you know Will Burkett at all? Will? He's mm-hmm. this young kid who's just hosting for me like a year ago, year and a half ago. He still works with me, but... And blew up like yeah. Comedy Central wouldn't sign him, whatever. And he's like, I'll just do my own shit, post clips and uh, call the, the the theaters or venues myself. Now he's doing like a fucking 30 city tour, like crushing it. You know, what's crazy is like the, the just in general, it seems like in the next 10 years, um, everyone like because because truthfully, I was talking to my guys about this, actually, like you have one guy. No, my guy. Well, you my said guy, guys? My guy. No, normally there's three I of them. I do that too, though. No, no, no. Like, I check <laughs> no. with my guys. There's and Chins. No, 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 there, no, no. Just one producer. So there's one here my now. My team. You mean your yeah. brother? No, no, no. <laughs> Jacob's here right now, but there's normally three of them. Nate, okay. Sylvie, and we were having this conversation. My guy's at the gym, not here. And we were talking about how, like, everything is moving towards social. And, and also, there's, like, a whole generation of people that, like, eventually are going to die. And, like, no one's going to be watching. Like, who do you know who's, like, 16 who goes, like, I'm going to turn on CNN? Oh, never. Or I'm going to turn on the news something. None. That's not good. So, like, at some point, that shit's just completely dead. And people just tune into, like, the people that they like or, the, like, the sort of content that like, they're trying to find. It's interesting, like, because it's changed so much. Like, the, like the world in 10 years is going to be completely different. Completely different. I think I think that it's a challenge, too, for guys. Like, like you have your audience. You have your niche audience, right? Yeah. Logan Paul has his audience. I think in order for people to grow, like you have your lane, like I have my hardcore fans yeah. in order to grow and get to whatever level you want to get theaters, arenas, you have to step into another audience. Street fighting Nate Diaz. Street fighting Nate Diaz. That's Boom. Lot. Boom. There we go, dude. You got You somehow got to figure out a way to get another audience. Yeah, get just, in order get, to keep growing, you got to get different Get them to love or hate you. Yeah, bro. Get fucking mad at you, dude. Yeah. I love, honestly, I can't Fight lie. Me, bro. I love getting the fucking MMA guys riled up. They I love that up. shit. And I get off people like someone hit me the other day. It was like, oh, we'll pay you like a million dollars to fight someone. Really? To fight. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. The fi- like, I didn't. Would you I do just, it? I think about it, but I'm like, I also want more. Because like if I get my ass beat, it's kind of embarrassing. I don't need a million dollars like that. Yeah, it, it depends who it is. Like if it was like the mountain, like somewhere if we go south and you like. You know, oh, I got to fight the mountain? Yeah. Okay. Go no, south dude. or something? No. It depends who it is. Like if you can definitely win, fuck, get your money, bro. You think so? Fuck yeah. I think about it. I'm thinking about it. A mill's dope, but like a mill's like six hundred thousand, which is After a lot taxes, of money. Yeah, but, but at like, your level, it's not life changing. Yeah, I don't need like that, dude. Trust me. At some point, in my, at one point in my life, it was that was I thought a million dollars was like, oh, I'm rich forever. Yeah, and then fuck you, money. Yeah, and then you and then you start making money in California. You goes like, no, I'm actually broke. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, like, not only the government money. Yeah, yeah, not only broke, but like I have like ten times the amount of shit I have to pay for. Yeah, I'm struggling. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, dude, it's actually really weird how I don't understand that. Yeah, I, it's like, weird. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> no, it's really fucking weird. You buy all think, this shit and you're like, oh wait. A million dollars. I've already spent it, basically. I have and all you, these houses, cars, and shit. And then like, you have to keep fucking making it. Otherwise, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, dude, they get you, man. They get you, dog. Wow, it's such a crazy thing. I love it, but though, you obviously. But you would take a fight for a certain amount of money? Yeah. A certain amount of money, I'd take a fight. I don't know what that number is. Like, because I obviously, like, yeah, well, I'd love to take a fight that, like, I know I could win, but that's also kind of fucking lame. Because like it'd be it'd be good to get out your lane, like out of your comfort level. I think in the content get out would be good for your brand. Yeah, and but then if like I get my ass beat, it's not good. It'd be like fucking loser talking about fighting everyone. <laughs> <forever. laughs> you got it smoked, you know? Like I don't know, man. I honestly, I'm I'm really I'm heavily considering it. Whatever Who's the I right f- match. I just don't know who. We've talked about this before. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I've talked about like f- fucking C bum because he's a fucking big body, but he would never do. It. He doesn't need to do it. Um there's some other people, but it's also like, I don't know. I just, I guess because I don't need it. I'm just like, I kind of just like fucking poking people. Yeah. That's fun. I dig it. But I man, man, maybe at some point, I think for me, the biggest thing is like, I'd have to accept the fact that my training is going to have to be completely different. And then I'm going to change. I'm going to be a Correct. little different, which is fine, which maybe is the direction I eventually want to go in anyways. Yeah. Um, so maybe like that's the way out of being like the jacked bodybuilder. Yeah. I don't know. Cause I, I do really love training. I love, I love boxing. I love the, the jitsu stuff. I love It'd be it fun for you to try once different experience. Well, I've done a bunch of that. I've trained yeah. some of that stuff. So it's not like I'm completely like fucking vanilla to, to all yeah. of it, 
but I think I have that that perfection kind of like trying to do everything right and it's like just the idea that I could lose makes me just kind of be a bitch I'm not gonna lie man that's what's cool to rest though I know I know that's why you gotta respect Jake Paul the fu- I, I I respect the fuck out of all him. the as eyeballs. much as I want to see Nate beat him or him lose these I respect the fuck out of what these guys do especially him man he's he's lost he's fucking all he's the eyeballs it. yeah because it's like everyone just especially like I'm even an example of like oh I want to see him lose I know <laughs> you just need the right dance partner I, I just don't know who it is I would and you know I'm in the fight business usually I can help you out but I don't I, fuck. maybe Theo Vaughn <laughs> yeah I think Theo Vaughn would be good <laughs> just fucking beat up someone who I should be fuck, able to beat dude. up I, I don't know. Maybe hey, Schultz, because he's really smart. I don't think you get the respect mm. beating those comics up. No. We need someone with, like, formal training. Mm. Fight the mountain? He's 400 pounds. Yeah, he's huge. He's never done MMA, though, right? Just boxing? You need someone, like, similar to your lane, get you some new fans? Yeah. I don't know. I've thought about this a lot, though. Lizzo? Yeah, I think I could beat the <laughs> fuck out of Lizzo, honestly. In That'd street, be sick. In a street fight. In a, oh, easy in a street, <laughs> a street fight. fight. In, in in the ring, it'd be a little different. Because, like, what if they, like, what if she, like, just pressed me I up know. against the... What if you court? lose, dude? Dude, if I lose a Lizzo, honestly, I'm fucking quit. I'm delete. Control, I hope you text me, everything. like, the next six months. I got to fight. Like, oh, shit. That'd be sick. Yeah. I'd help you out for sure. I hope it's... Honestly, it'd be cool if it was Lizzo. Now I'm just really... You got me really focused on trying to fight Lizzo. Get it done, dog. Dude, can we, make, can we make Bradley Martin versus Lizzo happen? That'd be <laughs> so sick. Such a troll fight. Such a troll fight. Fuck, man. Such a troll would you? Is there anyone? Is there any amount of money that you would fight someone for right now? Yeah, for like life changing money, like Francis Gano money. I'd fight Francis for forty mil. Really? Hell yeah. I mean, honestly, if that was the number, I would do that. Like, yeah. what, what the fuck? Of course. But by the way, I want to ask you about that fight. Who do you think is going to win that fight? I mean, Tyson Fury. A hundred percent, right? That's what I figured. But the the why it's compelling says Francis does have the one shot knockout no, he power. Could where if he does land, it'd be over for Tyson. I just think Fury's Tyson's just too fucking good. Yeah, horrible man. fight for Francis. Not, none of that matters. He wins no matter what. Even if he goes in there, and gets knocked down in five seconds, he got his bag. He never has to work again. Yeah, you won. Yeah, I I respect the fuck out of that. Hell yeah. But Fury's so he's just uh, isn't that guy like six eight too? Yeah, he's a, he, I think he's the best heavyweight of all time in the history. Yes. Yeah. That's a, I'm I'm a hundred percent watching that fight. I cannot wait. What are we doing this weekend? UFC two two ninety one. Okay. Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, Alex Pierre, Jan Blakovich. That's a, the whole card stacked. Tony Ferguson, Bobby Green. On your fight companion. Yeah, I love this. The, the, your fight companion is so fun because it's just like you're just chilling with the boys, fucking drinking. And it's funny. I just I also love how much shit you got originally because like they were like this is Joe Rogan's thing. Yeah, that was I mean, such Joe a, started it. Yeah, yeah but yeah. It, it's just funny because he stopped it, and I think you were like, yo, can I continue this? He's yeah, like, yeah, Joe's the one who gave me the idea to do it. I just and love then, how- uh, Next week, I'm in Austin with Rogan doing his fight campaign. He called me. He's like, let's do fight campaign, man. I was like, oh, oh so shit. he still does them periodically? Just with me, the original crew, me, Eddie Bravo, and Brian Callen. So the three of us are flying out next week to Rogan to do so it. So those fight campaigns that he does, I mean, I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to pocket watch Joe Rogan or anything, but like, is this, is he getting like, how many people are viewing that shit? Millions. Like, like, yeah. Like fucking millions at a time. Yeah. Fuck dude. He does it live. Then he uploads it. Everything he does is millions. Is it? He's so famous now. Oh my God. I think he's one of the most famous people in the world. Yeah. Like in the whole world. Yeah. He's like, he's the debate. Like they could put on times magazine for person of the year. He's so famous. Yeah. Wow. Not did you, cause you've known him for so many years. Did you see that coming? He's so talented. Nothing surprises me. It's like, yeah. He's such a beast. Did he ever? So smart, too. Did you ever have a conversation where he was like, where, I mean, I don't see him as a cocky dude, but was he ever like, yo, I'm going to like be the biggest? Like, has he ever no, said? never. No. I don't think he planned for any of this. When he started his podcast, he was just fucking around. And got, he never thought. Why do you think he got to that level? Besides work ethic, besides doing it. Because do I think? think he's so smart and he speaks to so many young men and he crosses so many boxes. Like, you know, you have your certain fan base, I have my fan base, but his, like, everyone fucks with because... No matter what, like one week it might be a you know a chemical engineer or some shit, and then next one it's a fighter, and then it's a comic, and like, and he's so well versed in all of it, which there's no one like him. Yeah. So he crosses so many boxes. Well, I and guess, he's, and he's also he's interested, like he's curious about so many things. So do you think he's like just filming podcasts all? Because like, does he still do uh, com- He does tours still. He, he does comedy tours, and he does UFC. 
only major pay-per-views that are in North America. So what I don't get is like, how does he have time to, cause he has to, to be also reading books and, and ingesting content to be able to have these like conversations with these high level people. But he's only having people on that he's interested in. So he might be reading a book about something like, and oh, he'll hit him up. Be a dope guest. Yeah. So the real question is like, who wins a street fight, me or Joe Rogan? <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's Joe Rogan. I hate to say it. I seen that spinning back. I didn't have to defend this. Fuck, yeah. dude. He's a savage. Black belt and jiu-jitsu. You know what's like, crazy? Black belt. That's what's crazy about Joe Rogan. I feel like, I wonder if there's a whole a whole part of his audience who doesn't even know that about him. Like that he's just a fucking like no, Some people animal. don't even know he does stand-up comedy. Some people think he's just a host from Fear Factor. Fuck, dude. What a legend. You're like, oh, the guy from Fear Factor. It's like, what? what? That was 15 years ago. Yeah, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget Fear Factor. Oh, I love it. They Fuck. tried redoing it. I actually auditioned for the host front. It was down to me and Ludacris. Dude, they would have. You would have got so much hate for that. Really? Dude? Oh, that's. I pulled myself out. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I didn't think I'd get it. And when they asked me, it was like, it's down to you. I'm like, I told my agent, I'm like, this is a bad look, man. Yeah, they and were. I'm gonna... already close with Joe now. I'm the host of Fear Factor. Bro, they would have fucking. Ro- they would have been like, oh, really, Brandon? Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Fucking. No, trust me. I, tr- I, I saw that hate wave coming. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> Give it to Ludacris. Yeah. Not that they were going to give it to me. I'm like, I'm, I, I, I don't want to be considered for it. I'm out. That's funny as fuck, yeah. man. Shit. Well, that's what it comes down to is being just like that fucking crazy about what you're doing to have that success. So, it's, so it's cool, man. I like to yeah. see it. But anyways, dude, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, fucking honestly, you, you, you came in clutch. Pulled the dude, audible for I'm me. I'm telling you, you always hit me up, brother. You always help me out. Yeah. I told you, I'm like, yo, I need a guest for fight compare. Like, I'm there. I'm in, dog. So, so who's there? Ryan? Uh, Ryan might have something at Vegas. I just talked to him before I talked to you. He has something at Vegas. Ryan's, you know what? Ryan's like Theo Vaughn. Really? He just randomly pulls up to my gym sometimes. We film video. Like He's he such a once. good dude. I fucking love Ryan. He's yeah. one of my favorite people. But he'll, like last companion, an hour before, he's like, oh, dude, I'm in Vegas. I'm like, well, cool. So you got an hour to get here. He's like, I can't, man. Yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Could you have told me this two days ago? He's like, I literally just flew here. I'm like, okay. This week, he's like, ah, oh, dude, I'm in Vegas again. I'm like, I know. But I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him. I'm like, we him. committed two weeks ago, dude. He's I'll like, I know there, my though. team makes me go to, so be, but it'd be uh, you, me, Cheeto Vera. Do you know Cheeto? Yeah. He's like top five, uh, you know, 45 in the world. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be fun, man. I'm excited. Um, what, what, eight o'clock? Seven. Seven o'clock. Okay. Saturday. I'll be there. You're the I best, appreciate brother. you, man. Of um, course. Anything you want to tell the people who are. How much? Up? Love you guys. Oh, on tour wise, this Friday I'm at the Ice House with me, Jay Moore, Trey Stewart, Shop and Friends. One show at 8 p.m. Then August 11th, I'm in Phoenix, and now I'm in Ohio in August as well. But Phoenix, uh, August 11th, two shows, one Friday night, cool. August 11th. Appreciate you, man. You're the Bless best, me. man. Subscribe to the channel every fucking Tuesday. Um, also, drop some good reviews on the iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're everywhere. I love you guys. We're out of here. Who'd win in a street fight? It's me, dude. It's Easy. me, dude. I just asked a question it. to make you feel good. I love it, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. No, it is honestly really.